George Lucas once said that Soviet filmmakers had more freedom in making movies than he did, because they didn't care about commercial success of their films. Maybe he thought there was no money in Soviet Union. Of course, they cared about politics and social aspects, but in some point, Lucas is right, and that made Soviet films quite unique. This is Boris Daly and Boris Svidensky from Moscow here, and in this video I'm going to guide you through Oscar-winning Russian and Soviet films, which you should definitely check out. Let's go! Moscow doesn't believe in tears. Well, the main thing about this movie is that I haven't ever seen any woman who don't love it. That's a true story. The screenplay tells us about three young women who came to Moscow searching for success. I could call it an American dream, but I won't. It is hilarious and a bit epic love drama about heavy woman's destiny covering period from 50s to 70s. The irony here is that the starring actress Vera Allen is director's wife. Anyway, you can get a glimpse of what life and efforts of Soviet people were. There are a lot of funny moments and of course the atmosphere of Moscow at that period. I'm not sure if there was box office stats here in USSR, but it was number one movie in 1980 and it got 90 million audience in this country. In the country which was here before. By the way, Ronald Reagan watched this movie eight times before meeting with Gorbachev to understand tricky Russian soul, but they say that he didn't manage to do this anyway. Summary, this is the perfect one for creative romantic evening. Guys, good luck! Moscow Strikes Back. The original title in Russian uh, is The Defeat of German Forces Near Moscow. But in USA it was shown as Moscow Strikes Back and this is funny if you're a Star Wars fan. I don't think there were any in 1942, but as you can guess, it's a documentary about defeating German forces near Moscow. Actually, in 1941, Nazi tanks were about 14 miles from very this place. Uh -huh. Anyway, USSR and America were allies at this time, so there is no surprise, it was shown and got an Oscar. That's it. War and Peace. Actually, this is the movie which prevented famous Stanley Kubrick from filming his own biopic about Napoleon, which he was dreaming about. I guess because there were no enough room for a lot of epic films about 19th century in Europe. I think so. It is a four-part novel based, as you can guess, on War and Peace by Lev Tolstoy. Probably it is the most huge stuff Soviet film industry has ever created. The trick is that it was an important state PR project. The Ministry of Defense provided horses and the Ministry of Light Industry produced costumes and inventory. So plenty of explosions and guys in tights guaranteed. Actually, I like in this movie that it is historically correct, as it can be, which is quite rare now and I like this, it's cool. If you haven't read the book, and that's not a shame, if you haven't, it's too big, War and Peace tells the story of several noble families during Russian war with Napoleon in 1812 and something. Well, I think if you haven't read the book, you also already know this. So, if you want gorgeous historical movie about Europe, also with emotional and personal touch, and maybe you're tired of creepy nowadays CGI's, I think War and Peace is the good one, but Get prepared for six and a half hours. Darsu Uzala. Um, that's the title. Honestly, I have never heard of this movie before I started preparing for this video. Or I just don't remember it because of the title. Shame on you, Boris. But the interesting thing about this movie is that it is directed by Japanese Akira Kurosawa, one of the most famous directors, uh, I guess, of all times. The film itself is based on real story and tells us about the Russian traveler Arsenia and his uh, hunter friend from Siberia, whose name is uh, Dersu Uzala. Dersu Uzala. So Uzala from Kurosawa with Oscar and Siberia sounds weird, but why not? 
Burned by the Sun. Personally, I like this movie. I think it's my favorite in this uh, Oscar collection. It's a story about the last happy summer of Russian Civil War hero Kotov just before Joseph Stalin's repression of 47. Kotov is spending his summer in the house with family when a former groom of his wife appears. Some compare it with Gun with the Winds because of dramatic personal story on the background of huge social shocks. And for me, it is really great drama with perfect screenplay. Interesting fact, the director of the movie is Nikita Mikhalkov, who is actually the son of Sergei Mikhalkov, who wrote the words for Soviet anthem, which sounds like ta da 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 And by the way, he wrote the words for a renewed Russian anthem, which sounds like ta da 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 So we actually have a very special dedicated person for this here in our country. Mikhalkov also plays the main part and I think it's worth it. Interesting fact number two. Mikhalkov has a brother who is also a film director, Andrei Konchalovsky, and you might have seen his movie called uh, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man or something like this. And no, this is not the only family which is allowed to make movies in Russia. I guess. So if you want to start trying Russian Oscar movies, you should definitely try this one. Well, I think you enjoyed this one as much as you enjoyed Oscar 2017 and gained some profit for you. Type in the comments below what you think about those movies I have been talking about, if you have seen any of those. And subscribe to this channel, this is Boris Daily, new episodes every week. Yeah, I know it sounds weird, Boris Daily, but episode every week. So I explain it like uh, Boris Weekly is trying to become Boris Daily. Anyway, don't be shy to click thumbs up button if you like this episode and I'll see you in the next one. This is Boris Videnski here. See you. Bye bye. George, 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 George. Uh, la 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 la. Uh oh, uh oh.